and we're going to work this out. First thing, I got to put my name here. What do I use to put my name there? Which one of my tools? Yep, so text box. What color do I have to pick? Red or blue. I'm going to go with dark red today. Mississippi. Period two. Okay, so we're going to be completing the table based on the story they gave us this time. Okay, so previously, yesterday, we learned about how to com complete a table based on a rule that they gave us. Today, we're working on the same thing, the table, but it's about the story they gave us. So first thing, we have to look at what's going on. Parvin often cleans dishes for her mother. She can finish cleaning 17 plates in 10 minutes. How many can she clean in different time amounts? So the first one we're gonna think about is the fact that before she starts, zero minutes done, how many plates has Parvin done? It is a trick, not trick question. Before she gets started, zero minutes, how many plates does she have done? Zero. Okay, so X is representing our minutes. And Y is representing the plates cleaned. I can't spell. Okay, X is the minutes, Y is the plates cleaned. So at zero minutes, she's cleaned zero plates. That kind of makes sense. At 10 minutes, what did they tell us she did? Seventeen plates, right there in the story. See, so I'm gonna go highlight. Where's my highlighter? I know there's a highlighter here somewhere. Signature, markup. Maybe it's in here. I could always just make it light yellow, huh? And I can go like this. Right, I did the wrong one. I think I want to draw. I think it's in here. I'm going to do yellow and I'm going to put a, that's not the color yellow. This thing, yellow, thank you. I want yellow. This 17 plates matters. And this 10 minutes matters. So I'm going to mark those up. Markup is the highlighter. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I like it better. Yellow. I can highlight it. Yellow's not a very good highlighter color. I can't even see that. It's highlighted. So I'm going to use maybe light blue. Let's use light blue. Because Yellow, you can't see it. You need to be able to see it or it's not worth anything. I would like this right here to be light blue. It's a little better. So 17 minutes and 10 minutes are gonna be highlighted. Thank you for helping with that, by the way. So the highlighters in markup, back to our text box. Okay, so she finished 10 plates in 17 minutes, 17 plates in 10 minutes. Okay, she's helping mom. She's working for 20 minutes. How many plates will she have done then? How many plates will she have done in 20 minutes? Close brain, think again, super close. Thirty-four. Okay. So let's look at what it's telling us. 
not a highlighter, thank you. Not a text box, thank you. A drawing object. So how much change happened from the first time to the second time? How much change did we go? Plus, And then what did we do again? Ah. What did we do again? Another time, right? So what do you think we're gonna do on the last one? Something different. We're not gonna go 10 minutes. We're gonna see what's gonna happen more. So our next one, we're going to go 60 minutes. How long is 60 minutes? What is that? If we say 60 minutes, what is that? It's an hour. Okay, so we're looking at she's helped for an hour. So then let's look at what's happening with the plates. The plates from one spot to another, how many changed? What was the change? How much did it change from one spot to the next? From not doing any plates to her first 10 minutes, what, what change was there? Plus how many? Seventeen. okay. Remember, you guys are graded on your participation, which is showing up in the chat. Okay, our next time slot, how much change did we do? Oh, another 17. But Our last one is not going to be 17, is it? Because did we go 10 minutes here? How far did we go? What was our change here in the minutes? We added in 40 more minutes, not just 10. So we're not going to be going by 17. Okay, we're not going to be going by 17. We added in 40 more minutes. Try this again, see if you can let me fix this. We added in 40 minutes, not 10 minutes. So we didn't add in 17. We're adding in 17 three more times. So all together, I'm gonna do a text box. For this bottom box, the 60 minutes box, oops, is going to be made up of 10 minutes times six times times 17 plates because each 10 minutes is 17 plates and 60 minutes is six groups of 10. So we're gonna go get our calculator and we're gonna go ahead and see how we would go ahead and put that in the calculator. Okay, I'm doing 10 sets, no, six tets, sets of 10, that's the 60 minutes times the 17 plates, that's a lot, right? Because one set of 10 was 17 plates. I'm being crazy, it's only six times 17. I just, one set is 17 is 10 minutes, so we need six sets of 17. So the person that said 102, you're right. I'm going early morning crazy. 
So we're going to take out the times 10 part of this. Because there's six sets of 10. 10 minute groups. So 102 plates. Good job on that one, Brian. Nice catch. Okay. Because we did six sets of 10. 60 minutes is six sets of 10. Do we all understand that? I know I was confused for a second there too. Okay. So that's where we got 102 from. Six sets of 10 minutes. 60 is six sets of 10 minutes, which is why we're doing six times 17. That makes more sense, right? Okay, so now we have to make our graph based on what we have. So when we do our graph, the X goes on the bottom. So what are we measuring X as? What piece of our question is the X? The minutes or the plates? Is the X the minutes or is the X the plates? The minutes. So we're gonna grab a little text box. We're gonna put it down here and we're gonna go ahead and say that this is minutes that we're going by, okay? The X axis is going by minutes. The X axis is going by minutes. Pardon me. All right. And I have enough space, so I'm going to make every two 10 minutes. Okay, so every two is going to be 10 minutes. So the first, the second line is 10 minutes. The fourth line is 20 minutes. Got it? Sixth line is 30 minutes. Every two is the next 10 minutes. So it's skipping every other one because we have space. Now, if we didn't have space, then we wouldn't be skipping. We'd have to use every single line, but we have space. So we're gonna skip. Oops, typo. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? We understand what happened? Now, this first line right at the edge of the, of the graph paper, how many minutes is that at the very beginning? What are we gonna put? How many minutes? Zero minutes, exactly. Let me make sure I'm where I wanna be, yep. So it starts at zero and goes all the way to 60, skipping every other one and we're doing minutes. Now we gotta do this up and down here. What were we measuring the Y by? What did the Y stand for? What did the Y stand for? Plates claimed. So we're gonna make our text box. And normally you'd write it along the side, but uh, I'm not good at writing with Cami, okay, I'm not gonna write it with Cami. So I'm putting it right above the line so I know that this stands for my plates cleaned. And then we're gonna go and do the same thing we did here, we're gonna be skipping, okay? So the first skip happens at two lines up. What are we gonna put for our first number? What matched with our 10? What matched up with our 10? How many plates clean matched up with our 10? Seventeen. Okay, so our first one is seventeen. 
Then we skip a line. And we do the next box. How many would be two groups? How many is two groups worth? Thirty-four, because that's what we said on our chart, right? On our chart, it says thirty-four goes with the ten, with the with the twenty. Okay. So we did not figure out thirty, but we do need to know how many now. Three times seventeen. Someone use your calculator. Fifty-one. So we're labeling our graph. Skip a line. Four times 17, 68, skip a line, five times 17. And then our last one we know up at the top, I'm gonna to move my plates clean slightly because I have to put my last box in for my numbers, was our 60 minutes, right? 102 plates, one, oh, two. So when you make your graph, you do not have to make the scales for both directions go the same. They don't both have to go by tens. They don't both have to go by 17s. They don't both have to go by ones or fives or whatever. You can make the scale match what you need for your particular problem. So we're gonna put our dots on. Back to my right. At zero minutes, I was zero. So my dot goes down in the bottom. At 10 minutes, I was 17. So seven, 10 up to 17, put my dot. Put your dot, you gotta kind of wiggle it. I don't know, let me think. I wonder if we could use the circle feature and just make it small. Let's try it. That would be so much nicer looking. Because remember in here is shapes, circle is one of them. That's too big though. How can I make it little? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's see. I think it's always making that size. Could I make it smaller? Let's go undo. We're testing stuff out in Canva right now. Undo again. I want my circle. I don't want the line to be small. I want the object to be small. Will it let me size my object? No. Darn it. That would have been so much easier. All right, so we have to go back to the drawing feature. Red dot. Try and just keep it wiggled in the same spot and not make it a big mess, but you do what you can do. I'm not worried too much about it. There was 17, then 34 for 20, right? And then we did 60 all the way up here at 102. Right? Lily, can you share your screen and show me what you're talking about? Let me unshare. So share your screen, go down to the bottom of Zoom. It's a green box that says share. Because if we can figure this out so it's nicer dots, I'd like that. So, oh, you're just going ahead and picking a thicker and then making a dot. Okay, thank you. Just end Zoom and share. Up, oh, stop share at the top. <laughs> okay, thank you. So she's saying to go on your thing and change your thickness to something bigger, so that when you just put your dot, it's just a dot. Thank you, Lily. I didn't think about. It. I'm kind of new to Cami too. There, that's so much better. Thank you. But we need to connect them. So if you noticed in shapes. 
there's a line feature, okay? Pick the line feature, change the color of your line. I'm doing mine light blue because I was writing in green, in red, I mean. And I touch the first dot and I drag it to the second dot. And notice I can see the two different things, okay? I can see the two different things. So, are we okay with that one? We're gonna do the same thing on the next one, but it should come a little faster because we've gotten practice. All right, text box, we read the story. Yasmin's puppy Maggie weighed 14 pounds at birth. She doubled her birth weight in 10 days. Assuming her growth is constant, how much will she weigh at the various times in the first year? So what is the X going to stand for? Is the X going to be the days or the weight? So the way you know which one you're picking is you think which one is affecting the other. Is weight changing the days or are days changing the weight? The days change the weight. So because the days change the weight, the days are your X. Whatever one is doing the changing is your X and the Y is the other one. So in this case, the other one is weight. Um, and you should say in pounds, oops, too many P's. I'm gonna do this too, in pounds because you need to let them know how it's measured. I should probably spell pounds, right? Okay, it's not just weight, it's weight in pounds, all right? So, on day one, on the, is she gonna have a day zero? Yes, day zero is the day she's born. So, this is days since birth. We'll do that on the double line too. Okay, the number of days since birth. Because that's what it tells us, at birth, right? So day zero is birth. How much did she weigh? 14. Oh, it's ounces. So I should say weight in ounces. Thank you for catching that for me. Because 14 pounds at birth, that poor mother. <laughs> okay. It says she does what? What does she do? She doubles. So on day one, one day after birth, she is double the weight she was the day before. How much ounces does she weigh? Twenty-eight. On day two, after birth, how much does she weigh? Because it says she doubles her weight. Oh, in 10 days. So this is not day one. This is day 10. That's day 10. Sorry. Okay. At day 20. She doubles her weight from what she was before. So how much does she weigh at day 20? Not 42. How much does she weigh at day 20? If she doubles her weight each 10 days. Ah, she now weighs 56, not 42, because she doubled her weight from the time before. So in 30 days, or let's do something bigger, 50 days. So we need to do, no, let's just do 30 days. In 30 days, She would be how big? 
112, yes. So she is not adding the same thing in each time like the other one was. This time she's doing what? What does doubles mean? Did your pencil multiply exactly? Oops, I forgot to change this back from my writing the dots on the graph. Okay, so from day zero to day 10, 10 days, right? But instead of doing a plus, we did a times two. I should just probably use a text box and just be easier, but I'm so used to having to write it over on the side like this. <laughs> okay, our next 10 days. If you're doing a text box, it's fine. I'm just handwriting mine because I'm stubborn. I will figure out how to make this look nicer as we go. Times two again, right? Ten more days. Now, understandably, at some point, uh, is she going to keep doubling her weight every ten days? Times two. Does that make sense that she would double her weight every ten days forever? Does it make sense that we would double her weight every 10 days for the rest of her life? No. At a certain point, it would stop because growth stops. Okay, so what's the bottom standing for? Up here, bottom was minutes. What's our bottom this time? Days. Oops, don't want that. Changing my font. Days. Okay. Move it down a little bit so I have space. All right. So my first line on the graph is always going to be what? Our starting point is always what number? Zero. Okay. The second line is going to be our first number for x, which is 10 days, right? And then we're going every other one, 20 days, 20. going all the way out to 60 again, 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days, right? Our up and down line is gonna stand for what things? What are we calling that line? What did we figure out for that line? What did the days figure out for us? The weight in ounces, yes. Weight. That's always a weird looking word in ounces. Okay. And then we're gonna go up the side. Okay. We're gonna go up the side by 14s because I see that we started at foundation 14. So, one times 14 is 14. Two times 14. It's 28. Three times 14. I'm one line too high. What's three times 14? Not 56. What's three times 14? 
not 56. 42. 4 times 14. So you don't automatically put your Ys. You put what your Ys are jumping by. It started at 14, so I'm going by groups of 14. This one up here started at 17, so I'm going by groups of 17. Okay, so it's by how much the group starts. So whatever your very first one is, that's what groups you're going by. Five times 14. And six times 14. And that's where we stop because that's how high our graph can get us, right? So then we're going to go over and get our drawing and we're going to make sure we're a six and we're going to go put our dot. Um, when she's born, she weighs 14. So yes, we are starting up the graph line a little bit because she started at 14. Then in 10 days, she's now 28. In 20 days, she's now 56. And in 30 days, we're off of our graph altogether. Now, if you notice, this is not a straight line. When I connect these, and I am going to have to connect them by hand, and I'm gonna use a smaller line so that I can see the in-between. When I connect these, I'm actually making a curve not a straight line, which is harder than it looks. I'm going to do the best I can to make the curve. And you guys are going to do the best you can to make the curve. It goes off on a curve because it's not adding the same thing over and over. It's multiplying by the same thing over and over. So when we multiply by the same thing over and over, it makes a curve. But if I add the same thing over and over, I make a straight line, okay? That's a big difference. When we multiply over and over, it's gonna make that curve for us. We add the same thing over and over, it's gonna make the straight line, like the first one, okay? Questions about that? We have one more and then we're gonna analyze. All right, you tell me. What am I going to call my X's? Remember, we know which one is the X because it's the one that affects the other one. So Angel saw an internet pop-up advertisement for an investment that doubles your money every year. Angel invests the $20 her grandma gave her for her birthday. How much will she have in the various years? So which one is doing the changing? Is the money changing the year or is the year changing the money? Is the money changing the year or is the year changing the money? The year is changing the money. So the X is going to be our year, okay? Whichever one does the changing is the X, okay? Whichever one has been changed, investment, money, okay? Whichever one has been changed is the Y, okay? So the one doing the changing is the X, the one that's being changed is the Y. Any questions about that? I'm gonna go do it this way because I don't like it sticking out. All right, so her first time period, has she started investing yet? No. So at year zero, how much money does she have in the investment? How much money does she have when she's going to get started? 20 dollars, exactly. Then it says it doubles every year. So after year one, how much money does she have now? Forty. After year two, how much money does she have now? 
80 because we're doubling what we already had. After year three, after year three, how much do we have? Yep, 160. Because double from 80. 80 is double. Okay. So let's go look at what's happening. Start to year one, added one. But what did we do to the money? We added a year, but what did we do to the money? Multiplied it times what? Two, okay. And the next year was times two, and the last year was times two. And since I'm multiplying, what do I expect my graph to look like? What do I expect my graph to look at like if I'm multiplying over and over? What did we just figure out when we're multiplying over and over the graph looks like? It's curved. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Okay. Plus one year. Plus one year, right? Over and over we added a year, but we multiplied by two each time. Okay, so let's go get our labels. What's gonna go on the bottom? Year, yes. Okay, what's gonna go up and down the side? What's going to go up and down the side? Investment money, yes. So investment money. OK. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why she talked to me. She's downstairs. She's not even where I'm at. So she must have heard part of what I said and then was trying to figure out something. <laughs> like, uh, no. Alexa, we're good. So what are we going to go by on the bottoms? What is our first box always going to be? First line is always what? Zero. That's an easy one. Second line, skipping a line, and then we put what number? Because we were measuring our years by one. So we're gonna go by one, two, skip, three, skip, four, skip, five, skip, right? Okay. Then we're gonna go up the side with our money, right? Our first one's always zero. Our second one, our first real number is gonna be where we started. What did we start with? Because that's what's gonna decide how our lines go from there. Oh, so we started with 20. So my next one has to be what? So it looks like we're going by 20. So 40, skip a line. Next one's gonna be what? Not 80 because 80 is not 20 more than 40. We are not using our Y values to make this line. Okay. We're starting with our beginning and counting by, you know, times two, times three, times four. So we got 60. Our fourth line is 80. Our fifth line is 100. Our sixth line is 120. So the X's go to match the X's. The Y's, however, we start with the beginning value and times it by two and then times it by three and times it by four, okay? We do not use the Y numbers, okay? 
go get our drawing feature. Now, am I going to put this at zero, zero? Is that our first one? Is my first dot down here at zero, zero? Are we going to put our first dot down here at zero, zero? Our first line on our chart said zero, zero? No. So where are we going to put it? If not at zero, zero. Zero, 20. Yes. Remember, these are coordinates. Zero, 20. Then our next one would be one year, 40. Right? So one comma 40 would be our coordinate, two comma 80 would be our coordinate. And that's as far as we can put on our graph because three is 160 and it doesn't fit. So we change our line. We attempt as much as possible to make it look like a curve. I find if you draw fast, it usually works out a little better. If you try and be too careful about it, you mess yourself up. Okay, now we're gonna go back and we're gonna add something in. Okay, we're gonna go add in the coordinates on our graph. So scroll back up to the top. We're gonna use our text box and we're gonna label these coordinates. So that bottom corner coordinate was at parentheses zero comma zero. The next one up was at 10 parentheses 10 comma 17. Okay. So I'm just getting these coordinates off my graph on my off my table. And our last one up here ended up being parentheses 60 comma 102. She's a rock star. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the next graph. My first one was at 0 comma 14. My next one was at 10 comma 28. And the last one I can fit on my graph was at 20 comma 56. Okay, are we okay with that? Anybody confused about where these numbers are coming from? They're just straight from our table. And of course, we can only label the ones that we get to fit on the graph. Are we good with that? So which of the situations was proportional? Now, proportional means that we have to make a straight line, that we're repeatedly adding in the same value each time. So which one, A, B, or C? A, B, or C added in the same each time. Yes, so put my text box in. Part A was proportional. Actually is proportional, was proportional. Um, because now we have to answer the rest of it. How do you know the relationship is proportional by looking at the table? So the table for A went zero, got me zero, right? Let me go back. 10. Got me 17. Twenty got me thirty-four. So we're just transferring it down here. 
and 60 got me 102. Is that right? Okay. And our graph, our graph, right? I want to see. Our graph went zero, zero, 10, 17, 234, and then the 60 was way up here. And it made a straight line. Give me a color. For us, it made a straight line. And I'm not worried about labeling that one because it's labeled up there. So to be proportional, we're going to go back and finish this now. What did we notice was happening on the graph over and over and over? So we knew that it was proportional. How did the, how did the table numbers relate to each other compared to B and C? What was happening in A that was different than happening in B and C? And we're looking at what's going on with the Ys. If we're proportional, what is happening to the Ys? So let's look at these two together. What's different between A's, what's happening to the Y, and B's, what's happening to the Y? What's different with what's happening in the A to the Ys and what's happening in the B to the Ys? We are talking about the table, not the picture yet. The picture would be about the curve. We're looking at the table right now. What happens differently in a table that's proportional versus a table that's not proportional? How do we make the changes in a table that's proportional versus making the changes for a table that's not proportional? Because we said A was proportional. So what is, how is Y changing? What process did we use to change the Ys for A versus the process we used to change the Ys for B and C? Brian's answer is going to work for the second part with what the picture looks like. But we need to figure out what the graph is, what the table of values is going to look like. So how were we changing the Ys for A versus the Ys for B and the Ys for C? How were they changing? What did we do over and over to get the A Y value? What did we do over and over to get the A's Y values? Look what we wrote on the side, we added. Okay, so to be proportional, we have to be adding the same over and over. Okay, to be proportional, we have to be adding the same over and over, okay? So A is proportional, let's go back to my text box, because the same value was being added over and over to find the Y in the table, okay? And now we're going to look at the graph. And that's what Brian was talking about, the graph. For the graph, for the graph, how was the graph different for part A as opposed to part B and C? What was going on with A that was different for B and C?
What does line, what does that line in A look like compared to the line in B and C? And the graph will have what? What kind of line does a proportional graph have? Part A, what kind of line does a proportional graph have? Because we said A is the proportional one. So we have to be talking about A. What did A's line look like? Okay, so proportional graphs will have what kind of line? All the time. A straight line. Okay, if it's not a straight line, it could be curved, it could be broken, it could be anything else. There's all kinds of ways the line can change, okay? To be proportional, we're adding the same value over and over to find the y's in the table and the graph will have a straight line. Okay, so let's go save now. You should be done saving. So in your Google Classroom, click turn in. Okay, click turn in. Make sure you've attached your cami to your assignment before hitting turn in though. Okay. Now your homework assignment, let me get to that. that I believe is posting any second. Your homework assignment is this table where you're gonna do the table, tell if it's proportional or not, make the graph and tell two things you know that make it look that make it, that tell you the graph is proportional, two things that tell you it's not proportional. So one of these is not proportional, one of these is proportional. So you're gonna fill in the table, you're gonna tell what from the table made it show you proportional. You're gonna show me your work for the table in this section called example. You're gonna graph your table. You're gonna tell me two things about the graph that make it proportional. And then you're gonna do a not proportional, okay? Let me stop sharing. Everybody should have the 